That brings up the question of uh, asking for a friend here. If there's, uh, you know, other pockets of complexity, uh, commonly uh, called as uh, alien, intelligent civilizations out there. Well, we You're, don't know for sure, but I, I have a s strong suspicion that the answer is yes, because the uh, the one case we do have at hand to study here on Earth. Uh, we sort of know what the conditions were that were helpful to life, the right, the right kind of temperature, the right kind of star that, that, that keeps, maintains that temperature for a long time, the liquid environment of water. Uh, and it, once those conditions emerged on Earth, which was roughly four and a half billion years ago, it wasn't very long before what we call life started to leave relics. So we can find uh, forms of life, primitive forms of life that are almost as old as the Earth itself, in the sense that once the Earth became reason was was turned from a, a a very hot boiling thing and cooled off into a solid mass with with water, uh, life emerged very very quickly. So so it seems that these general conditions for life uh, are enough. To, to make it happen uh, relatively quickly. Now, the other lesson I would I think that one can uh, draw from this one example, it's dangerous to, to draw lessons from one example, but that's all we've got. Uh, and uh, that, that the emergence of intelligent life is a different issue altogether. It, uh, that took a long time and seems to have been pretty contingent uh the you know the the for a long time well for most most of the history of life it was single-celled things you know the, yes. even multicellular life only rose about 600 million years ago so much after you know so uh, and the the uh uh and then intelligence is kind of a luxury you know if you think <laughs> uh many more kinds of creatures have uh big stomachs <laughs> than, than big brains and in fact uh most 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 have no brains at all in, a, in any reasonable sense that, that that then uh and the dinosaurs ruled for a long long time and some of them were pretty smart but they they were at best bird brains because you know birds came from the dinosaurs and uh and uh and it could have stayed that way you know and and then and, and human and the emergence of humans was very contingent and kind of a very very recent development on evolutionary time scales and uh you can argue about the level of human intelligence but it's you know i think it's <laughs> that, that, Pretty impressive. That, that's what we're talking about and it's very it's very impressive and, and can ask these kinds of questions and discuss them intelligently uh the uh so i guess my my so this is a long-winded answer or justification of of my feeling is that uh the conditions for life in some form are v probably con uh, satisfied in many, many places around the universe, even and even within our galaxy. Uh, I'm not so sure about the emergence of intelligent life or the emergence of technological uh, civilizations. That, that, that seems uh, much, more con much more contingent and special. And we might it's conceivable to me that we're the only example in the galaxy or although yeah i don't know one way or the other i i, I have different opinions on different days of the week but uh, one of the things that worries me in in the in, uh, in the spirit of being humble that our particular kind of intelligence is not very special so th there's all kinds of different intelligences and yeah. even more broadly there could be many different kinds of life. Yes. So uh, uh, the basic right. definition, and I just had, I think somebody that you know, Sarah Walker, I just had a very long conversation <laughs> with her about even just the very basic question of trying to define what is life 
from a physics yeah. perspective. Yeah. Even that question within itself, I think one of the most fundamental questions in science and physics and everything is just trying to get a hold, trying to get some universal laws around the ideas of what is life, because that, that kind yeah, of unlocks well, a bunch of things around life, intelligence, consciousness, all those kinds of things. I agree with you in a sense, but I think that's a dangerous question because the the answer can't be any more precise than the question. And the, uh, the, the question, what is life, kind of assumes that we have a definition of life and that it's a natural phenomena that, that can be distinguished. And, but, but really there are edge cases like viruses and uh, some people would like to say that uh, electrons have consciousness. And they, you know, so you can't, if you really have fuzzy concepts, it's, uh, it's very hard to, to reach precise kinds of scientific answers. But I think there's a very fruitful question that's adjacent to it, which is uh, has been pursued in different forms for uh, quite a while, and is now becoming very sophisticated and reaching in new directions. And that is, what are the states of matter that are possible? You know, so in in high school or grade school, you learn about solid li solids, liquids, and gases, but that really just scratches the surface of different ways that are distinguishable that matter can form into uh, 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 macroscopically different meaningful patterns that we call phases of matter. And then there, there are precise definitions of what we mean by phases of matter, <laughs> and uh, and that have been worked out and fruitful. Over, over the decades. And we were discovering new states of matter all the time and kind of having to work at what we mean by matter. We're discovering the capabilities of matter to organize in interesting ways. And uh, the, the, some of them, like liquid crystals, are uh, important ingredients of life. Our cell membranes are liquid crystals, and, and that's very important to the way they work. Uh, recently, there's been a development in where we're talking about uh, states of matter that not only not that are not static, but that have dynamics that have that uh, have characteristic patterns not only in space but in time. These are called time crystals, and that's that's been a development that's just in the last decade or so it's just really really flourishing uh and so uh is there a state of matter that cars or a group of states of matter that corresponds to life uh maybe but, but the answer can't be any more definite than the question i'm so. i mean i, I got to push back on the the, the quite those are just words i mean I, I i disagree with you the 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 question points to a direction the answer might be able to be, to be more precise than the question, because well, because uh, just as you're saying, there there's uh, that we could be discovering certain characteristics and patterns that are associated with a certain type of matter, uh, macroscopically speaking, and that that we can then well, uh, be able to post facto say. This is, let's assign this, the word life to yeah, this well, kind of matter. I agree with that completely. That, <laughs> that's what that's, uh, I, but that, that's, so it's not a disagreement. It's very frequent in physics that, or in science, that uh, words that are in common use gets get refined and reprocessed into scientific terms. That's yes. happened for things like force and energy. Uh, and so we, in a way, we we find out what the useful definition is, uh, or symmetry, for instance. And the common usage may be quite different from the scientific usage, but the scientific usage is special and takes on a life of its own. And we find out what the the useful version of it is, uh, or the, the the fruitful version of it is. So I do think so. In that spirit. I think if we uh, can identify states of matter that, or linked states of matter that can carry on processes of uh, self-reproduction and development and, and information processing, 
we should say we we might be tempted to classify those as things as life. <laughs> yeah.